Using his discoveries, astronomers in later centuries were able to find hitherto unknown planets in the solar system, Neptune and Pluto. Newton's law of gravity provided the definitive mathematical support for the Copernican system. And more earthly phenomena could be explained too. The apple falls vertically to earth because of gravity. And the only reason it falls faster than a feather is because the feather is so light it floats in the air. The gravitational principle also allowed Newton to explain the tides. They are the result of the moon's gravity acting on the waters of the oceans. Newton's law of gravity is still the basis of classical physics even today, admittedly relativized somewhat by further discoveries in the early 20th century. The work of Albert Einstein revolutionized our view of the universe. He threw out Newton's notion that time and space were independent of each other. He even went a step further and showed that gravity also exerted an influence on time itself. On a large, massive planet, time flows more slowly than on a small, light one. Newton described gravity as a force between two bodies. Einstein saw it as a property of space-time. In the presence of a massive body, space-time changes. As a result, Einstein's gravity works not only on material bodies, but even on electromagnetic waves, including light. Einstein's theory was confirmed just a year after publication. During the 1919 solar eclipse, astronomers observed a distant star close to the sun. As Einstein had predicted, its light was deflected by the sun's gravity. But the changes Einstein made to Newton's theory only come into play on a cosmic scale, with strong gravitational fields and high velocities. For everyday purposes, Newton's law of gravity is entirely adequate. At the age of 50, Newton gave up his scientific researches and moved to London, where he became master of the Royal Mint. He ran a vigorous campaign against counterfeiters. In recognition of his scientific achievements, he was knighted by Queen Anne in 1705, at the age of 62. Sir Isaac Newton died in London at the age of 84. He was buried in Westminster Abbey. Today, Sir Isaac Newton is seen as one of the most important scientists of all time. He is esteemed not only as the founder of classical theoretical physics, Modern acoustics and aerodynamics owe a great deal to his work. And in optics, he was the one who recognized that white light is made up of the colors of the spectrum. He also discovered what are now known as Newton's rings, a characteristic feature of the diffraction of light. For all his success, he was aware of the limitations of his scientific knowledge. In his notes, we find the following sentence. I do not know what I may appear to the world, but to myself I seem to have been only like a boy playing on the seashore and diverting myself in now and then finding a smoother pebble or a prettier shell than ordinary, whilst the great ocean of truth lay all undiscovered before me. <laughs> 